All right, hi everybody, this is Jim Nix with Nomadic Pursuits and I'm back with another video. Today I'm gonna take you through stacking multiple presets in Aurora HDR Pro. Uh, the last couple of videos I did, uh, I would use a preset for the first layer and then for subsequent layers, I was just doing brush in adjustments. And uh, in my hurry to do those, I completely forgot to talk about how you could just stack a preset uh, for the different layers and brush those in. So I'll cover that today. We're going to start with this series of brackets. Uh, this is from a few years ago in Copenhagen. Uh, they've got an entertainment district there. I think you pronounce it Newhoun, uh, but I'm not Danish, of course, so it's spelled to me like Nyhaven. Anyway, whatever you call it, it's awesome and it's beautiful. And I was there one evening during blue hour shooting, and you can see that there. Um, I took seven photos for this series of brackets, but I'm only gonna use these four. So I had them in Lightroom, which I use as my host program, and I've exported over here to Aurora. So I'm gonna say Create HDR right there, and here we go. Aurora is opening, and I'll take you through stacking some presets, and uh, we'll get going. So uh, it brings the four photos in here, it stacks them together, and it spits out this base image. And if you notice, it applies a little bit of, uh, of um, effect, if you will. So if you, if you hit that uh, preview button, that's what it was. That's actually the base HDR. That's got a little bit applied to it. So I always come over here to the bottom corner and hit reset, and it takes everything back to, uh, to, to the base layer. So now I have that. So the first preset I'm gonna use is in the realistic HDR category, and it is called Vivid Memories. As you can see here, that'll uh, pop on there. I'm gonna close the preset so you can see it in full frame. And there you go. Now, it's um, it's kind of kind of blue, kind of bright, and um, it's also a dust spot there. Um, I'll remove that later in Lightroom, but, uh, and there's another one there. So sorry about that, but either way, uh, we'll, uh, we'll fix that later. This is about the layers. So the first thing you do is you have this layer, and as you know, you can adjust the opacity up here Right, I can take it down, there's zero, so that's none of the preset applied, and that's 100. So I'm gonna leave it at, uh, I'm gonna actually take it down a little bit. So there we go. Uh, let's say 81% uh, opacity. Now if you look, there's the original photo, and there it is with the preset applied. But what I wanna do is I wanna make some adjustments to the sky and water, and then I wanna make some adjustments also to the building. So, I'm gonna add layer, you go to this plus sign, you hit add layer, and you can name that layer one, and I'm gonna call it sky and water. There you go. Now I'm gonna go choose a preset. So what I've done in the previous videos is I would come in sky and water and just use my brushes and make changes, but I'm gonna use a preset. I'm gonna go kind of a, sort of a dreamy look. So let me see, here we go, realistic dreamy is the one. I was playing with this before I started the video, so. Um, I like that, um, but of course, when you hit a preset, it applies it to the whole photo, and we don't want that, so we're gonna go in and create a mask, and um, here we go. So, there's the uh, the entire preset applied. Let me uh, turn off that layer, and that's what I had on the original image with the first preset. The second preset applies the whole image. That's a little too much. I like the sky and water, though, so I'm gonna grab a brush, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna do this kind of quickly so you don't have to watch me brush all this in, but if you notice, uh, the sky is changing because I've brushed in the adjustments there. If you ever wanna see what your mask looks like up here in the left corner, you just click that, and there you go. The other thing I didn't do is change the opacity. I want the opacity to be 100, so let me go back over this and uh, fix that opacity, and there you go. Now, um, the brush is a little bit large, so you can use the bracket keys to take it down. That would be uh, left bracket key shrinks it, right bracket key increases it. But I also wanna do the water, so I'm gonna leave it kinda of big right now, and I'm gonna come back and, and fix some of the, uh, the roughness here in just a moment. So let me just brush in this layer. Okay, there we go, we've got this layer brushed in. Okay, but, um, as you notice, it's a little rough around the edges, so I wanna do some erasing, which I don't think I showed in the other video either. So opacity's still at 100. Uh, I'm now on the eraser instead of on the brush, right? There's the brush, there's the eraser. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna left bracket key to bring 
this down in size and I'm gonna say you know I miss some I got a little happy over here I'm gonna take erase some of that so it's super easy to do and super quick you can just come in here and again I'm doing it a little bit roughly just so I don't uh, have to waste all your time watching me uh, do you know fine-tune brush adjustments but the other thing really is is that you don't have to do in these kind of scenes you don't have to do completely detailed brush adjustments um, there we go let me get rid of some of that and I want to come back here to where the edge of the water is and clean up some of that a little bit so there you go so that's my mask I turn that off there you go so I've masked in just the sky and the water with that preset that dreamy preset so let me turn that off there it is before and there it is after a little moodier a little uh, darker and a little more uh, interesting to me um, the other thing I might do though is take the blue down uh, come over here to the color the saturation is a little high uh, I'm going to take that down a little bit and maybe go into the color filter for the blue and maybe take that down so there you go drop the blue if you look at that I can just move the saturation to the to the right and really bring it up but I don't want to do that I want to bring it down a little bit so there's that so uh, let me show you once again uh, the layer uh, turned off so that's just the original preset on the uh, on the whole image and then masked in for the sky. So if you notice, uh, the buildings haven't changed at all, and that's because the mask is for the sky and for the water, right? So I'm gonna turn that back on. The other thing I like to do, um, if I zoom in a little bit here, and it usually takes it a moment, excuse me, it takes it a moment when I zoom in, but if you zoom in and look at the sky and the water, there's a little bit of noise. Yeah, you can kind of see that, uh, some, of the, some of the noise there. Let me see if you can see it in the water. I think you can yeah I'm seeing it here I don't, I don't know how well it shows up in the video but there's a bit of noise there so while I've got the mask layer created for the sky and the water I'm gonna go into the denoise and I'm just gonna bump that stuff up I tend to like the really smooth kind of sky and water so if you look at that um, let me turn off that layer there there's the original one you can see a bit of noise and there's the second or, or the mo more recent version which is quite a bit smoother and kind of dreamy. Um, I'll show you in the sky as well. Uh, there it goes. So there's the original. You can see the noise before I added this uh, layer in. And there's the layer with all the noise reduction applied. So that's one of the beauties of Aurora is you don't have to leave Aurora to do noise reduction. And Mac Fun that makes Aurora, they have a great noise reduction tool called Noiseless. And if I'm using one of their other products and then want to go reduce noise, I'll go use Noiseless. But if I'm in Aurora, I don't need to. I can just uh, stay right here. And that's, in my opinion, one of the beauties of Aurora and why it's really changed my workflow because I can do so much in this single tool that I don't, I don't have to go elsewhere anymore. So there's your layer for sky and water, right? There's the before the layer and there's the after layer. So the next thing I want to do is go add a, another preset layer. And this one's going to be for the buildings. I want to, uh, if I can spell buildings, there you go. I'm going to go add a layer to really bring out the uh, the details. So I added the layer. I'm going to hit presets. And I'm going to do a balanced and realistic, I think it's called. Yeah, here it is. Balanced and realistic. So if you notice, uh, let me just close the preset uh, menu so that you can get this full screen. And again, uh, when you first drop in the preset, it's going to cover the entire image. And so the whole image has been hit with this preset, but we're going to mask in just for the buildings. But if you look at it, let me turn that off. If you look at the buildings, and especially down here where some of this dock is, uh, let me turn it back on. You can see how much more pop it has, right? So pretty cool. So I'm going to go uh, take the mask. I've got the brush selected. All Oops, no, I don't. Uh, there's the brush and uh, opacity is still at 100. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna mask in just in some of the buildings and some of these areas here. So give me just a moment, I will do that. So I'm just masking it in. It's easy to see the changes here as I mask uh, over this. Let me increase the size of the brush a little bit. As I swipe across here, you can see that some of the changes are taking place. And uh, I often will do this and then I'll go click on the mask button and see what I've missed, which is quite a bit. So let me tidy that up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Again, not a uh, 
not a fine tune uh, sort of mask, but just a quickie to show you. Now let me turn this off. There's the before, there's the after. Now if you notice that popped quite a bit there, um, which is great. So um, again, the saturation is a little bit high. Now, um, so hang on, let me go in here to this saturation. I think I'm gonna take that down a little bit. The preset added a plus 18. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. I don't want it to be too great. Well, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, I usually just kind of play with the saturation and vibrance until I get it to look like something I, I like. So let me turn this layer off again. And okay, that's not a huge adjustment, but I like it. The other thing you can do, if, if you look in the structure, the clarity is up by 16. Maybe you wanna bring that up a little bit more. And again, I'm just impacting the layer for the buildings. So let me turn that off. So no changes are happening to the water or the sky. And there you go, right? But one thing I notice is the reflection down here is not very crisp. So while I'm still in this layer, I'm gonna change the size of this and I'm gonna go mask in here. And, oops, sorry, I've got the eraser on. That's why it's not working. So I'm gonna go mask in. If you look at this, you can see this reflection will start popping quite a bit more. I'm just adding to the layer mask and selecting this section to give it a little bit more pop. Let me make sure. Yep, so if you look at the mask, now it covers all that. And again, I'm just kind of cleaning this up. I'm gonna cover a little bit of that boat too, I like that. So, mask off. Uh, let me turn off this layer again one more time. There you go, and turn it on. You can see that down in here, I've got a little bit more of the reflection. Really pops, makes it really nice. Uh, so, let me show you before and after. So that's the base HDR with, with no filters, no adjustments. It's just the four exposures blended together here in Aurora. And there it is after adding a preset to the first layer for the whole image, the second layer just for the sky and water, and the third layer for the buildings. Um, now, if you wanted, you could do more. I'm kind of done with a photo, but just to give you some examples, I could just, I'll just call this whatever because I don't know what I'm doing. But whatever it is you want to do, you could just add another layer and go back into presets. And maybe you want to go into a different category. Let's say dramatic. And, uh, ooh, this ethereal is kind of fun. So ethereal, that's going to apply to the whole image uh, because, again, we haven't masked anything, but maybe you like that look. Um, but you don't want it on the whole image. So you can just change the opacity. Give that a second to catch up. There we go. Uh, it's kind of fun, but maybe you don't want that on the whole image because you like some of the adjustments you've already made. So you can just, you know, apply it, uh, not selectively, but just change the opacity so it's not fully 100%. So there's 100% uh, with the, you know, let's call it whatever. Uh, there's zero. That's the photo that we started with. Somewhere in between. That's kind of fun, right? So if you look at that without the layer, there's where we were after the first uh, three sort of presets. And with this fourth one, there we go. You could do that, or if you didn't like that preset, you could say, well, I don't really like ethereal. Maybe I'll go back into realistic and do something kind of dreamy. There's some dream, here's, here's dreamy. So again, you hit dreamy and give it a second and it'll apply dreamy to the entire photo because again, we haven't masked anything. But here in just a moment, this will show up and maybe we can just change the opacity, right? So I like that look, it's kind of moody and kind of spooky, but I don't want the whole thing, so I'm gonna take that opacity down, um, right? So there's, that's pretty low. So there's zero, there's a hunt, basically, there's a hundred with the dreamy, but let's say we like it at about 47, that sounds good. However, looking at this, you might say, gosh, you know what? I think the bottom's too dark. So you can just go into the top and bottom lighting, and again, you're on this layer, so you can just say, I'm gonna lift the lighting for the bottom, and there you go. So again, that's just, uh, there's before, and I like that photo quite a lot. Uh, here's after, I, I just happened to add another uh, layer, which was another preset, and that was the uh, kind of the dreamy, kind of moody one. And as you can see here, this time, instead of masking in just a portion of the photo, I applied it to the whole photo. I just took the opacity down to about 47%, and then because the, the bottom was so dark, I went into the top and bottom lighting and just raised the, the lighting on the bottom uh, quite a bit, a plus 92. But as you can see, it did add a little bit of dreaminess and moodiness to the photo. So that's it, then you just hit apply, and that'll take you, either save the photo to your desktop if you're using uh, Aurora as a standalone, 
but I use it as a plug into Lightroom, so that'll drop it back into Lightroom. And once in Lightroom, I can go in and fix these uh, tiny spots that I see. Although you can't really see them too well now with, with the different filters and the moodiness applied, it's kind of hiding the spots. Uh, plus the noise reduction actually does a really good job of smoothing out uh, even the dust spots. And so uh, that's, uh, that's how that works. So that's really it for today. That's the entire workflow for stacking various presets in Aurora. It's a lot of fun. Uh, honestly, you could sit here for an hour and just stack preset upon preset and come up with some crazy cool uh, creation, um, which is fun to do. Um, but I'm going to uh, turn off that layer. I kind of like it like that. And let me show you one last time. There's the original uh, four exposure HDR with no presets. And then there it is with three different layers applied, uh, each with a different preset masked in selectively to apply that effect just in certain portions of the photo. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.